Hey everybody, <laughs> how's everybody doing? Move this microphone so that they can hear you just as well as they can hear <laughs> me, <laughs> which never seems to be the case. <laughs> so it is Wednesday instead of Thursday. We're traveling a lot tomorrow, and we didn't we did not know if we would have uh, internet access to be able to do a live stream tomorrow. So we pushed it up a day, and I guess you guys have noticed too. We haven't been on every Thursday either because it just hasn't been working out for us. Sabrina's going to read the comments, maybe. Oh, it's not running. Hi, John. Hey, John. I actually saw that one. How come? Nope. I don't know. I don't know what's that. I don't know why. I've... Okay, so it looks like she can see the comments, but I guess it's working. It's okay. working. <laughs> hey Roger. Hey, you know Roger, I saw your email. Well, not email, but a comment that you commented on a comment that I commented on another channel it was RV enthusiast, and I can't get it to comment back to you. I don't. I'm not sure why that was about me uh, skydiving when I was younger. <laughs> that was before we met. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. And just how we'll just say the experience was not wonderful, <laughs> but it was it was interesting. I would never do it again. Never, ever. I don't think I would ever do Never, ever, ever. <laughs> I'm scared of heights. And I thought, well, if I would go skydiving, it would break that fear of heights. That's what you thought? That's what I thought. But it didn't work. And uh, so it was my first jump. And what you do is something called like tandem jumping. And you have somebody attached to you. I was taller than the guy. And I just didn't realize like when, when we landed, you know, I took all my weight plus his weight. And my ankles were hurting for days. And I think something was wrong with my the, the straps too, Roger. Like when the when the chute was pulled, I think these straps were too loose and they all yanked in all terrible areas. And I was bru I was bruised for days too afterwards. And somebody else told me that shouldn't be happening either. So but the actual fall was kind of neat. Uh it was just I didn't care for the landing too much. But the fall itself was pretty cool. My hand we this I did this in July in uh, Pennsylvania and uh, this was a long long time ago probably over 20 years ago and I remember oh, it was definitely over 20 years ago but I remember my hands being frozen during the fall I didn't wear gloves or anything and I didn't even think that you know I would need gloves but my hands were so cold on this fall but it was interesting it was definitely interesting <laughs> um, so we don't really have too much to talk about we just wrote down a couple questions that we had throughout the week that we're going to talk about and this mug here, I wanted to give a shout out to this company called Better For Your. Uh, I met the owners at the RVE Summit. They gave me a ride to Enchanted Rock, which was an hour drive up and then an hour drive back. And they were super nice to even offer me a drive. I didn't know that I needed a ride <laughs> for Enchanted Rock. I, I just showed up at the front where everybody was standing and I said, hey, is everybody here going to Enchanted Rock? And I thought, I don't know why, but I thought it was a shuttle. And they're like, yeah, we're all going. I was like, oh, cool. I said, is there, how are we getting there? And they said, oh, we all brought our cars <laughs> or something like that. And uh, these this couple from Australia, uh, Jason and Rose said, you, you can ride with us. And they were super nice. They're actually planning on doing a trip back to America. Uh, they're going to rent an RV. And I think they said for maybe six months, depending on the visa times and stuff like that, I forget just how long, but their plans is to come back, rent an RV, and tour the country in the RV for, for a few months. But they were really, really nice people. I really enjoyed talking to them about the differences and the similar similarities of America versus Australia with our commercialism and things. They, they were really, really nice. But part of the uh, RVE Summit was they, they gave out these mugs. And it's a stainless steel mug. It is like indestructible. <laughs> I this will what I like about the mug is that it's going to outlive me like I can't break it it's double walled so my coffee stays hot for a long time it's got like real good temperature what call it and it's real <laughs> light like I can put this in my backpack on a hike or something like that and uh I won't even know it's I won't even know it's there I know I keep spinning it around but uh I put a link down in the bottom of this description no I put a link in the description of this video of uh of where they are uh, you get two mugs for twenty dollars two mugs for nineteen dollars and like i said it, it's going to outlive me which is sad 
I guess, in a way. <laughs> so that is the, the new mug. Uh, Better for your is the name of the company. You have questions or do you want me to go no. into these questions? No, you can go into those questions, but no pro says hello. Hey. And Brina. <laughs> nice hey. to see us both. Hey, no pro. <laughs> It's always good to see No Pro on there. No Pro has been watching us since we were in our apartment. No Pro is part of the original 13 sub subscribers. <laughs> and for some reason, she has stuck around all this time with us. <laughs> and we do appreciate it. Thank you. We definitely appreciate it. Um, actually, we should probably say thank you, too. We just hit 4,000 subscribers this week, which is huge for I us too. I was at work and you were texting me about it. <laughs> I, <was like, laughs> I, I like, get excited okay. over that stuff. I don't know why, but I'm just like, hey, we hit 4,000 subscribers. I said, who, 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 who are these people? Who are these people <laughs> that want to watch us? I, I think it's, I think it's really cool. I think it's way cool that yeah. we get that many people to push. And, and YouTube is really tough. I don't know why it is, but it's very difficult to get people to push that free subscribe button on a YouTube channel. And then it's even more difficult to get people to watch your your videos. I was actually thinking the other day, would I recommend a YouTube channel to somebody? Like if somebody said, hey, do you think YouTube is something I should do or try? And no matter what, it, you know, different subjects, it does not necessarily uh, RV. And, and I would say definitely yes, because it's it has been a lot of fun to have the YouTube channel. Just be, you know, prepare for some weird comments every once in a while. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say go into YouTube thinking that you're going to make a lot of money because I don't think there is unless you don't be like explode into YouTube famous. Yeah. into Yeah. Yeah. But it is a lot of fun. And I would say too, that we learn a lot more from you guys than you guys learn from us because we're so new to our being, although we're coming close to our one year anniversary for our, Yay. for our living in the RV. That'll show, that'll show the fam that said that I wouldn't make it six months. <laughs> Actually, I think they gave <laughs> they me gave three you a couple weeks. weeks. They only gave us a, mm -hmm. they I'll only gave you a few weeks. To... I'll show them. <laughs> So let me take, you know what I can do? I can take this down too. And then we can see the, the comments up here. Um, thanks Lou. RV habit is Lou. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I, I know some of you so well, like even though you have a channel name, like Lou RV habit, he has a channel, but, uh, I know his person, you know, his, his real name. <laughs> well, maybe it's not his real name. I don't know, actually. <laughs> Yeah, Lou, I, I was really excited to get hit the 4,000 subscribers. I think it's really cool that people see something in the channel and they're like, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll subscribe to them. And then you got people like No Pro that said, yeah, I don't need, I don't know how you stuck with us this long, <laughs> to be honest <laughs> with you, No Pro, because our first videos are rough. Even our new videos are rough, but our, last, our, our old videos were really rough. If anybody ever saw, I throw this video out all the time and nobody ever clicks on it, but... Throw away your socks video. That's a rough video. <laughs> That's my first YouTube video was the throw away your socks. <laughs> um, so we'll go into a couple questions. We'll take questions. We have no real set. This was just going to be a more laid back uh, style live video. I didn't pre prep any uh, video to throw in here or travels or, or anything like that. But somebody asked if we could talk about the buying process of our RV. Was it similar to buying a car or was it more similar to buying a house? How did the negotiating work, haggling, uh, the whole search for the RV? Weather today is very good, Branch Out. We're in uh, Virginia for the day. We're here for one day <laughs> and then we're shooting back up north tomorrow. But today, 60 degrees and I'm, I'm actually sweating. Are you about to smell your armpit? No, I was going to wipe my, my mustache. Oh. I was like, what are you doing? Because <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> well, actually. Okay. That's enough. It's a little rough. That's enough. That's enough of that. <laughs> I sweat once it goes over like 50 degrees. So they asked if we could talk about the buying experience. This will probably be better for you to explain Oh, my it gosh. <laughs> because Sabrina just has an amazing memory. And if I tell you, I'm, I'm going to screw everything up if I, if I go think try to think back to over a year ago. We bought the motorhome last January, so it's been a little while for me to try to remember. But I know, uh, I would say my personal opinion was that buying the motorhome had. I, I've bought a house before in the past. I bought a condo in the past. We've rented apartments. I would say that the motorhome purchase was more like buying a car than a home. 
So I've never actually bought a home, condo, or anything like that. Just cars. And I would agree. It's pretty much like buying a car. It was very yeah. similar. So what we ended up doing is, first, of course, we figured out what we wanted. And then once we figured out that's what actually, we wanted... Yeah, that's important. <laughs> no, because if you don't, like, the salespeople will talk you into anything. I, I really think that you should have a pretty firm idea before showing up to the dealers... Oh, I agree. ...of because, what you want, because oh, they, yeah. they, will, they will talk you into anything. So one thing about the motorhome, to keep in mind, is that you can finance them like a house. So you can finance them over 15, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. So because you can do that, even though it won't be worth anything by then, <laughs> but because you can do that, they'll try to talk you into anything on the lot, really. But, um, yep, so we figured out what we wanted first, and then we went down to... First, we were on RV Trader. And we looked at RV Trader for months and months and months trying to figure out where we were actually going to buy this RV from. So we looked at the same model RV, different states across the country, compared like California to Florida, decided we looked at some in Florida that we were like, well, we don't know what like the salt water you were saying and the humidity. Did we really want to buy an RV from Florida? Thought about California and the cost to get to California and to bring it back. And so we ended up finding our place on RV Trader up in um, Delta, Ohio. And so when we found the place in Delta, Ohio, we looked up the RV and the RV on there was actually priced cheaper than anywhere else in the country that we looked at. Yeah, by, by about $15,000. Yeah. And it was so low. I remember us saying... What's wrong with it? That there must be something wrong with it. Because, you know, once we narrowed it down that we wanted, we knew for sure that we wanted the Vista 27. Sorry. We knew that we wanted the Vista 27. Uh, and we had a pretty good idea of what a fair price was was all across the country. And uh, this guy, uh, Schaefer's, I just put his, his website up there, was easy $15,000 under the lowest, the, the next lowest price. We we're like, oh, something must be, <laughs> something must be wrong with it. But, uh, but we contacted him, and he was very nice. Uh, the person that asked us about the buying process asked, you know, how did it work as far as, like, haggling? Did, did the people have to go talk to your, you know, you give them price, and then are like, oh, well, I got to go talk to your manager and, mm -hmm. you know, my manager in that way. But we didn't have that experience. He was the owner. So we already went in there knowing it was a fair price. It was actually a really good price. The other thing is before we went in there, we already had financing for the RV before we went in there. So we had secured that outside of their dealer and they even offered to try to see if they could get financing through their bank and if it would give us a better rate than the one we have. I think our, our not I think, I know our rate is 4.49. So they were looking at, could they give us a better rate and they couldn't. And so it was basically, we spent a hundred dollars to hold it while we had our RV inspector go out and look at it since it was out of state. And then after that, we when we decided we definitely wanted it, we went up to Ohio and they met us on a Saturday morning because he runs the place. It's actually on a farm. Yeah, and they the, have an actual full working farm that they sell RVs and they're one of like I think they said that they were the second highest class B uh, Winnebago B dealer in the country. And this, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, and this is how we found out that he was able to sell the RV so for so much less than everybody else is because. I mean, it's not a knock, but I would say that his, his he's a no frills type of dealer. Mm -hmm. There's no showroom. There's no over. It's him. I believe it's his daughter and his son. Uh, well, that's who we met. Yeah, yeah that's who we met. I'm I mean, not sure if it was his daughter, but definitely his son. Okay, met. definitely his son that we met. So, I mean, his overhead is almost nothing. He's selling them off his. It's a. I mean, it's a legitimate <laughs> farm, like tractor farm. rolling yeah. out as yeah. we left. <laughs> and he built his uh, small little dealership right in front of his farm. And uh, just a real straight shooter type of guy. No, no frills. No, nothing. yep, no frills. Very no nice, fooling though. around. Very, I mean, super nice. And uh, so what happened was we had the inspection, and we thought, okay, once we have the inspection, the guys don't want to find some issues, and we'll be able to negotiate a price there. <laughs> so we called Terry, and I said, hey, Terry, our guy found a couple issues. He's like, send me. He he didn't even ask what they were. He said, you know, I said it's about. It wasn't a lot, maybe 10 items, Maybe not even. but nothing serious. And he didn't even ask what the items were or whatever. He's like, just email me the list of the issues and we'll fix them before you get here. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I thought we would be able to <laughs> negotiate a little bit or, or something. But I mean, he was just so 
nice about it. And then when we when we drove to Ohio, we rented a car, drove to Ohio, and uh, we went there. No pressure. He's like, look it all over. You know, take take your list to make sure everything was addressed. And I mean, I don't know. We we felt smooth. like we it was, yeah, very it, was easy. it was one of the easiest purchases. Uh, We've ever, for a vehicle, yeah, for, yeah, it was for, very easy. yeah. I mean, it was he he made it very easy because he was so straightforward with everything. Because he was already, we knew what we had to walk in the dealer with, what our down payment was. We already had the financing. It, it was just straight to the point. Yeah, and Terry point. had no. I mean, when when the dealer says no hidden fees, I don't always believe it, and he doesn't advertise <laughs> no hidden fees fees. But it was literally on our sales receipt was the price and tax, and they were the only. They were the only two numbers on the paper was the price and the tax. And that was it. There was no setup charges, no holding. Tra- I mean, like nothing. It was like really super easy. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to say one more thing about it. And now I don't remember. But it was a very good buying experience with Terry Schaefer. If anybody's looking for an RV, I don't think we've ever plugged them in any, think we've in any way. Them. And, yeah. yeah. And, and the same thing, too. I, I know we do like we recommend products and stuff like that a lot. And we're never, ever paid to say that we like a product or, you know. I don't think you can pay me to say I like something. Yeah, we only tell you guys, like, (laughs) if something that we're using, like the Magnet Shade we like and and things like that. Nobody, we're not affiliated with anybody. (laughs) Free (laughs) agents. Nobody wants to be affiliated with us, apparently. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, Terry Terry up at uh, Schaefer's, that was great. And and it was really nice, too. When we left, he knew that this was our first RV, and his son runs the... Like maintenance, maintenance and mechanical thing. part of it. You know, I guess he's the one doing the, the repairs and getting them ready to to go out the door. And his son gave us his personal e or personal cell number and said, "Hey, I know you guys are new and that you you know you did purchase an extended warranty with your motorhome, but if you guys have ever have an issue with this motorhome, give me a call and maybe I can walk you through it. Yeah, troubleshooting. Troubleshoot over the phone. it over the phone before you try to get involved with." your uh, warranties and contacting other people. He said, because it's your first RV, he said it might be just something simple. He didn't say it would be something that we were doing wrong, but I think that's what he was kind of implying. And he's like, just give me a call on the phone. And most likely he's like, I could probably walk you through it over the phone and save you a lot of hassle. Really just super, I agree. super place. Lou said that he bought his in Ohio. Did you say Ohio. super place? Oh, a super place. A super place. I you saying he was super place. I was like, what? <laughs> I might've said that too. I don't know. <laughs> Lou, Lou was just telling me the other day, actually, uh, when he bought his, he drove his back home in a blizzard. And it did snow it a little bit, right? It snowed on our way back. Nothing like a blizzard, though. Yeah. I mean, just, just a slight just a slight bit. Just a slight bit. Um, what type of TV setup do you have, and what do you use for internet service? Uh, Bodyguard, we use uh, two things for internet, teamed up with what's called a Wii Boost. So we have a Verizon MiFi, and we have an AT&T Nighthawk. And depending on where we're at and who has the stronger signal is the one that we'll go with. So our Verizon MiFi is unlimited uh, data. <laughs> so what happens after 22 gigs of our unlimited data, <laughs> it gets uh, throttled down to... Supposedly 3G, but it is like unusable, Yeah, a- After the 22 gigs, I will say that this Verizon thing done yeah it's almost unusable like i can check email and that's about yeah yeah and that's the best it can do after the 22 gigs um but the good thing about it is that it's 22 gigs per device so we have a MiFi that gets 22 gigs of hotspot both our phones and our tablet so we get something like almost a hunt almost uh just about under a little under a hundred gigs with the verizon and then we have the 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 jetpack was 15 and the phones were 22 well, that wouldn't make sense. I think it's 15. She's probably Don't quote right. us on her, yeah, but she's, I think she's it's 15 right. and the she's phones right. are 22. So we're looking around maybe 80 gigs of uh, unlimited <laughs> <laughs> high speed through the Verizon. Um, but I will say that our Verizon signal is usually strong almost everywhere. Right. I like there's that. almost... We, we only use the AT&T now when we're out of our unlimited... Verizon, because the Verizon works everywhere. The AT&T hasn't worked everywhere, but it is a true... Unlimited. Unlimited. And when it's strong, it's blazing. Right, and when it's strong, it's blazing, and it doesn't get throttled. The 
when we at, we're grandfathered in, I should say. Uh, so they said it'll get this one will get throttled if you're in a congested area with AT and T. Oh, okay. And you've used over, I think it's twenty something gigs. I think maybe it's twenty. But once you've used over a certain amount, it will throttle we you. If you're, throttled yet. We have never been throttled, okay. but it will. It says it may throttle it may. you. Okay. If you're in a congested area. But but AT and T did just recently change their uh, internet deals, and I don't think that the they're supporting any more yeah the, the, the plan that we have i don't think is available through at&t anymore i guess it was too good of a deal i mean i, I don't know what that, <laughs> i guess that's the only reason why they would uh get rid of get it. rid of it yeah no pro it was a great experience and it did seem unreal because that's what i wanted to say earlier not only was he fifth like fifteen thousand under everybody else but he had this this coach had the extra options in it that we would have paid extra for because we have an AC heat pump. This had all the options, all the upgrades that were available at the time for this uh, floor plan. It had the uh, AC heat pump <laughs> and the overhead and the overhead bunk, which would have been both upgrades that we would have paid for. So yeah, it, it was great. It was great. Can't say enough good things, which I'm not sure if that's really how you say that, but that's how I just said it. <laughs> So I put a link actually to uh, to Schaefer's RV sales. Sorry, <laughs> that's also down in the description too. If anybody's looking for a an, an RV, I know he mainly deals with the B class, but he does have uh, class A's and class C's every once in a while too. Um, so that was our buying process or in our buying experience do you have anything else to add to that no no <laughs> sabrina has a headache today uh I, I, just because i said no yeah he went and told everybody you're i have that you're quiet <laughs> oh putting me on blast <laughs> oh my goodness um and i i did i'm not telling the people's names that asked us the questions if you guys write in questions and you want your name mentioned on the channel please you know, let me know that you want your name mentioned. I figured I won't mention anybody's name. Uh, but somebody had asked us about taking care of our tanks in wintertime. And what do we do differently in the winter to protect our tanks rather than the summer? And really, for us, it's no no difference. We're, we're using a TST yellow solution that I can't remember the name of that goes into our gray. And we're using Aquatech pods in our toilet. And we just, as long as we're keeping the motorhome warm, we are keeping the, the tanks warm so that they don't freeze. But we're not using any different chemicals or anything like that as far as the tank, uh, holding tanks care. And they were asking if we felt like there was a advantage to having the uh, Sani flush, which I would say, oh, yeah, yeah ab absolutely have an advantage of the Sani flush is, if, if anybody doesn't know, so normally if you don't have it, you pull the, the handle and all your waste goes down the tube and out. And that's kind of pretty much it. And then there's they sell wand equipment that you can put down your toilet to try to, to flush. But, or you have what we have, which is called a Sani flush, and you connect a water hose to it and it sprays the inside of the tank, sorry, with like a little carousel, I guess almost like maybe what would be inside your dishwasher. So it's like spinning and spraying the inside of the tank and flushing it out. So I know for us, when I do that, you know, well, me, when I, when I pull the <laughs> tanks and dump everything and then close it up, run that sandy flush and then open it up again, it definitely makes a difference. Like more stuff. Is coming out, so I I do feel like it's it's making a difference. Have we tried a blue streak system for the black tank? I don't know what that is, Lou. Never heard of it. I never heard of it. Uh, send me a link. I don't know, or or I can look it up. I I'm kind of lazy though. I'd appreciate you if you just sent me a link. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Even with the headache, you're being your charming self. Thank you, Sin. I've never thought of you as charming. Shush, that's enough out of you. <laughs> RV Habit said he threw me under the bus. I threw him under the or, bus? Yeah, poor Sabrina threw you right under the bus. Oh, maybe yeah. I threw him under the bus. I, I, I throw him, I throw Sabrina under the RV. 
At least it's not Chuck Norris, so it's okay. I was thinking about doing a Chuck no, Norris. No, no, not today. Not not why Chuck Norris sleeps with a nightlight? Oh my God, no, no. I love these Chuck Norris ones. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, some, so uh, another question was, now that we've had our motorhome for a year, do we wish we would have bought a diesel rather than the gas? You want to answer? You don't, no. You don't drive, so I don't know how I don't, much... So the problem is that we have never been or driven in a diesel to know what we're missing out on. Nobody's ever driven us around in one, and so we've we never driven one. we don't know what we're missing one. out on. Other than the price tag, I don't know what we're missing out on, so I don't I don't mm. wish we have one. I, I think the big deal for diesel for us, for us to go diesel, like we've had, we've had very little issues with our gas. You guys seen the video where uh, we had to sleep over at a Ford dealership because it was some type of sensor. But other than that, we haven't had any issues with the gas. We've been able to get everywhere uh, just fine. We pull up hills. We pass the track trailers. I think for for us to want a diesel, it would be comes down. It would come down to towing capacity. If we wanted to tow a larger vehicle, uh, we're limited to right about five thousand pounds. So if we wanted to pull like a truck that had a golf cart in the back, then we would go with a, a diesel. but or the Volvo I want. <laughs> yeah, Sabrina really likes the Volvo. But I don't know if that can be flat-towed. Yeah, it that can. might not be able to flat-tow we already, anyway. We already looked that up, yeah. But yeah, the, the gas has been great for us. Uh, so I will talk about some of the differences with the gas and the diesel of what you're getting. So diesel, you're getting a better transmission. You are getting a better ride. You're getting a, a, a higher tow capacity. But you're also paying for those things. So for us... It's almost like what, you know. They only gave me three weeks, so it wasn't for us. What's that? <laughs> they only gave me three weeks before they thought I'd be out of this. So right, 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 was right. That, that, that wasn't for, that wasn't, <laughs> I think we looked at diesels for a short period of time, and then we decided, you know what, though, if we go with gas, we can take them to any Ford dealership, almost any mechanic across the country, as long as their bays are large enough, they could work on it. Whereas the diesel, we were afraid that we would, uh, have trouble finding diesel mechanics. They're not as, you know, uh, widespread as the gas. And uh, maintenance was a little bit higher on the diesel. So for us, it just made sense to for us to go with gas. I know sometimes it can be a real touchy subject because if you're a diesel owner, you're like a diehard diesel owner. But there's no such thing as a diehard gas owner, I don't <laughs> think. <laughs> so <laughs> they're the reasons why we went with uh, with gas. <laughs> no Frogo Pronto says she, she needs to know why <laughs> or she wants to know why. So Chuck Norris oh my sleeps with a nightlight and it's not because Chuck Norris is afraid of the dark. It is because the dark is afraid of Chuck Norris. No. <laughs> yes. Absolutely that's not. why. Oh my gosh. Absolutely not. <laughs> that is why. <laughs> He's being nice and he leaves the nightlight on yeah. for the dark. That's enough. He's a nice guy. That's enough of these jokes. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the blue streak system is the old vanished blue button. Oh, 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 well, those I've seen. I've never seen them in an RV. No, I've never seen them in an RV. And we actually didn't use one in the apartment because we had our cat that we well, at, we had our cat at the uh, time yeah. that used to drink out of the toilet. Yeah, and if we so we never so used we never it. used them. Yeah, she's sorry. She. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. No, bro, that's a good one. <laughs> Life with Ken and Jane, they thought it was funny. Oh, they get worse. <laughs> I got... No. I don't know how many of them. I know. <laughs> I know tons of them, tons of them. Storms. Storms. Somebody was asking us what we thought about storms in the RV, and it really depends... They suck! <laughs> it really depends on the intensity. So if it's just a light rain, you... you it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's fine. You hear it on the roof, it's not a big deal. If it's a... I would say even if it's a heavy rain. Heavy rain is fine. Heavy it's rain the is wind. It's the wind that gets us in the storms. Um, the wind, I feel like a baby in a carrier. I'm just kind of shifting around and I can't sleep because I'm always moving. Uh, yeah. And thunder terrifies Belle. Yeah. So, and it, it does get loud. I mean, we've, we've been in thunderstorms where, you know, if the ground shakes, the RV shakes along with it you so. swear there's like a tornado i expected to like <laughs> open the window and see dorothy and toto flying by and it's not that serious out there but it feels like it's that yeah, serious the, the wind here. There, there's been a few times that we've brought our slides in during heavy winds because we're afraid of our slide toppers 
uh, getting pulled off. It sounds that bad outside. I don't know if that would really happen, but it, it there, there's been times that we've been afraid, not afraid enough, but concerned enough that we, we, we felt we better pull the slides in and uh, protect these slide toppers from getting ripped off. And, and it literally rocks you. Like, like you said, like a crazy I'm like a baby. <laughs> Just raw. I don't like it at all. I do like, yeah, the, the rain, rain is awesome. Nice. Yeah, the rain does sound nice up on the roof. I don't know. Something about it is very soothing or, or relaxing. Even if it even if it is a heavy rain. It just sounds, it does sound cool. I mean, it's not like we're in a tin can, so it's not like an echoey, it's nice. tinty sound. It's nice. It's nice. The wind, mm-hmm. not so much. The snow hasn't been bad. Um, even we were in Oklahoma. And we had that tornado warning, but luckily we were parked near a building. But if we were out like in an open field, I think we would have evacuated. Maybe. <laughs> the, the, like, between the lightning, the thunder, the, the the wind, I mean, trees were coming. I think I think if we were in a field somewhere, we would have mm-hmm, evacuated. Mm-hmm. But we felt pretty safe. We were we parked up real close uh, behind a church and just just kind of just stayed <laughs> there out. for the night. Yeah, just hid hid behind that. Hey, free at last with a three. It took me a long time to figure that out. <laughs> His FR, he has a FR three. I get it. You get it right away? Oh, yeah. It took me a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a long time. <laughs> I like how you're trying to explain it to me. You're like, so do you get that? Do you understand that? Like, <laughs> I think it took me weeks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's kind of neat, though. I, we, we watch a lot of other RV channels and we'll see like the same, you know, you guys watching us, you know, we'll see you guys commenting and I'm always like, oh, we should comment. And I'm like, eh, I'm like, stop. You can't be on, yeah, other people's you don't want to be on other people's channel, but I see you guys on other people's channels <laughs> all the time. And I'm always like, I always want to say hi. And be I like, always hey. stop him. Yeah. And I'm, I always want to be like, hey, we watch these guys too. But then yeah, Sabrina's like, no, nah, leave them alone. Leave other people's They're on another, alone. yeah, they're on somebody else's channel. Stay out of their, their business. <laughs> keep them in check <laughs> we we turn it off we uh, used to leave it we on we used to leave it on all the time john and uh so for us it, it's i don't so i should say for one. kenny because he went to the rv inspection course and then he came back and we were never allowed to leave the <laughs> on anymore just because they, one had, they, they had a couple slides of things that happened yeah. uh, with the lp on with with tire blowouts one day I had fridge that was nice and cool. <laughs> Anything I needed. The next day there was no, that was a no go. There was no more LP. Yeah, uh, they had a couple slides of people that had that left the LP on. They had a tire blowout, and the tire blowout ripped through their propane line. Oh, you never told me the stories. Yeah, you told me you didn't sparked. want to worry me. Yeah, and mm-hmm. sparked, and it just ignited throughout the. I mean, once it caught, it just kept on going. Since the and since the valve was open, it was like an unlimited source of fuel for the fire so ever since that we haven't so (laughs) but i will but i will say uh ours is not a 12 volt ours won't do the 12 volt we either have to have propane or we have to uh be on the uh 110 but it stays cold like that's really the only reason to that i can think of anyway that you would need to leave your propane on is for your refrigerator the longest we'll travel in a day is about eight to ten hours and it's like a giant cooler already so as long as we unplug it in the morning shut everything down and drive for those eight or ten hours the fridge stays cold when we park for the night at the rest areas or walmarts or whatever we just turn the propane back on overnight and it rechills the fridge until the next day so <laughs> i don't feel like we're the dreaded lp on or off debate <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's i mean i i I'd leave it up to personal preference. For us, we've been turning it off. Right? We have been. But I would feel as a... I mean, you're not... I don't... I, I would I would leave it up to that person. I wouldn't... I, someone said the, the dreaded LP. I mean, some people get upset when they hear other people say that they leave it on. I would never get upset at somebody that wants to leave their LP and have a cold beer when they arrive at their location. Cold beer. We've definitely... Okay, that's enough with the cup. Okay. So we've definitely <laughs> done that as far as running the generator, and the generator can cool the fridge. But usually oh, yeah. when we turn on the generator, 
I'm usually turning it on to just use the microwave and then I forget it on. <laughs> and then Kenny's running. driving and he's like, why is the gas running out so fast? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I swear I could tell, but I probably really can't because the generator really does. When they say, we, we heard this term before that it like sips fuel, the generator. And it really does. We've ran the generator all night at rest areas, woken up the next day and the needle doesn't look like it has moved at all. In fact, some people, I've heard people say, that running the generator for your AC in the house while driving costs or is better gas mileage than running the AC up front where it's pulling power from the motor. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if anybody wants to test that. <laughs> but yeah, you and that's true. We could always turn the generator on and uh, turn the fridge, you know, if, if we really need it to. Lou, is it because of gas mileage? Do you feel, is it in your experience, have you been received, have, are you getting better miles per gallon with your generator rather than the upfront AC unit or your, you know, controls up front? I leave it on just to be different. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, I don't know. It's different for everybody. Different for everybody. Um, I have written down Magna Shade. And somebody must have asked us about the Magna Shade, but that's literally all I wrote was just Magna Shade. So now I'm not <laughs> sure what they wanted to know about it. Um, I'll say that it makes a huge difference in the summertime. Before the Magna Shade, our front dash area is where... I don't know why. I was going to say that's where Sabrina likes to lay. But you, you did I, that I, I say, I said it before that way. And I always, People have this mental image of me like laying on the dash now. <laughs> but Belle likes to lay on the front dash. And uh, before the Magna Shade, even with the AC on, it would be cool in the back, you know, from the from the captain's from behind the captain's chairs all the way throughout the coach, you know, it would be 75 degrees. But the dash would be 118, I think, when we, yeah. 118 degrees. Um, but since the Magna Shade, putting the Magna Shade on, it now keeps the the dash the same temperature as the rest. So if we have it 75 back here, it's 75 up in up in the front. Um, somebody said something about mail, I think. Yep. But what do you do with mail? How do you get it from the post office? Great to see you too. <laughs> hey, Craig. Uh, great to see you too. So, uh, we use a company called Escapees. It's a very popular company. Again, no affiliation here, but we have nothing but good things to say about them. We've been using them for almost a year now. Uh, and their service, as far as I can tell, I mean, it's... I can't say it's unmatched because we've never used anybody else, but I couldn't imagine anybody being better. <laughs> like, they're great. I mean, if you're looking for uh, a some type of mail service, we, both of us, well, I won't speak for Sabrina, but I definitely recommend Escapees. I think they've been great. Yeah, they've been awesome. There you go. Both of us, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, we actually have a pile of mail to go through tonight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we, I thought I saw something else. Are you reading? Hey, so I think we're back. <laughs> I did push the wrong button. Well, I'm guessing when I try to scroll down to uh, check the chat, I push disconnect video. So I don't know. If I, I'm guessing that you guys could still hear us, just couldn't see us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, what was I talking about? Oh, the mail service. So, the mail... Uh, stay put, everybody. They're coming <laughs> back. Thank you, Nopro. <laughs> um, so, yeah, definitely escapees. They, they've, they've been great. They've been great. Um, but I thought... I thought I did see another question in there. I'm trying. I'd, I'd like to answer everybody's question. I don't think you're, you're allowed to scroll anymore. No, you do it. Or no scrolling at all, you're thinking? I don't think you're allowed to scroll. <laughs> I'm allowed to do anything. I'll keep my, I'll keep my hands crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep my arms what crossed. What kind of miles per gallon are you getting? So we get, uh, with running the generator at rest areas, towing the car, we're getting between seven. I mean, it varies a little bit, but between... I would say between seven and eight miles per gallon. It is uh, nothing amazing, <laughs> but it's not, I guess it's not horrible either. Uh, when we, when we got weighed, what did we weigh? The, 17,000 something. The 17,000, a little over 17,000. I think we were 17,200 pounds plus the car being 3,500 pounds. And we were a lot of weight. So I guess that's not too bad. Seven, eight miles per gallon. I don't know. It's not too good, though, either. <laughs> it is dangerous, Danny. <laughs> Somebody was asking, when are we going to go up to the New England area? I'm not I sure. I don't know. You really want to go up like, I do. to Maine. I wanna... and, yeah. But I don't, know. I don't know. Yeah. As of right now, no no plans for the, the New England area. Um, What do we have going on with the channel? Anything exciting coming up? We're doing uh, what? Wind Rock. Oh, that when uh, if you if anybody's ever seen our 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 very first RV experience, we went to a place in Tennessee called Winrock and we rented some ATVs and uh, we had an awesome time. So we're going back and going to rent some ATVs again. We're supposed to have a couple people uh, meet us. I think uh, our NRV Chronicles, they're going to be there, possibly camping with the Kellys and possibly Tim Rover. I have to. Uh, I have to text those guys and see. I know they were interested in going and uh, camping with the Kellys. They have their own uh, ATV. They have a side-by-side -side Razor, I think it's called. I always get things mixed up. I'm pretty sure they have what's called a Razor. And I figure if they go, we'll let we'll let Jason lead because we're just going to hold him back. And then we can we can just all follow behind him. And then if he wants to go off on his own, you know, I, I feel bad slowing him down <laughs> pretty much. It should be a good time, Danny. It should be a good time. So I came back, but we actually read everything. That <laughs> <laughs> we already read all of our questions and everything. So now I'm not really sure what to talk about. What do you have to talk about? I don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> Nothing at all? No. Nope. Nothing? No. Nope. You're getting close to your our one-year nomadic versary. Okay. How has it been for you? It's been okay. Well, if that doesn't sell it, nothing <laughs> will. <laughs> if anybody's thinking about moving into an RV full time and living this way. Remember, you heard it here first. It's, it's been, been okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. So maybe we'll go for real this time. My throat is actually bothering me a little bit from, from talking. I, I speak very loud for some reason. When I'm on here doing the live streams, and I'm not, and I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure why, why I'm because talking so loud. Because you always so say loud. I'm too quiet, so then you try to make up for it by being extra loud. Yeah, and our microphone is like across the table. Oh. It's over here. Oh, your favorite restaurant. I did... when we're traveling. Ooh. We don't really eat out that much we, when we're traveling. We don't, but we have been to some pretty good places. That I think, I'm sure we have our favorite place. Hmm. When in Philadelphia, there's a place called uh, Chickie and Pete's that I like a lot. We haven't eaten Chickie and Pete's in like five years. Wow. Well, but it's I mean, still good. Oh, that's right. Things can still be your yeah, favorite even if we don't it can still be my favorite know. even I, if I haven't been there in a long time. And they're in the Philadelphia area, Chickie and Pete's. Um, but since we've been traveling, so it, it's, it's tough for us to say because, like, I would say that place that we went to with RN RV Chronicles and paddy wagon like that was but that was just because we were having so much yeah, fun with them yeah that wasn't the food i had it wasn't, a side salad yeah, a bag it, of lace right right but we had a lot of fun there at that <laughs> restaurant same thing like when we hang we we went out with uh nomadic native to the all you could eat sabrina and i are vegetarian matt 
Matt took us to an all-you-can-eat barbecue place. <laughs> what, was it an all-you-can-eat barbecue place? It, yeah. it wasn't all-you-can-eat, though, was it? I think they do have it on certain days. Okay. You no, know, no, maybe they were eating all-you-can-eat. <laughs> and that was, and we really liked it there, too, but I think it was, you know, just because we were hanging out with Matt and Marie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, I'll give that one some thought, and I'll, I'll, I'll comment you back on that one, our favorite restaurant. I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> have we done any modifications? We've done uh, a few. So we put 360 siphons up on our vents, on our black tank and our gray tank. We'll see you life, life, ugh, life with Ken and Jane. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry that wasn't very Thanks nice guys for coming in and stopping by. Uh, they always check out all of our lives and all of our videos. We always appreciate it. We did uh, put siphons on our black tank and gray tank. It helps kind of circulate the air and pull the air up out of the tank and uh, just keep it a little smelling a little, a little better fresh. in here. <laughs> yeah. The Magna shade up on our windshield. I guess I would consider that an upgrade. Uh, our safety plus bar was probably our biggest. Not well, the Magna shade was more expensive, but I would say that safety plus bar probably made the most amount of difference as far as driving the RV. It went from I went from being able to you know, dry. before it, I had to hold on to the wheel with two hands and the slightest little breeze and the trucks went by were pushing us around. And after the install of the Safety Plus bar, now I can, if I wanted to, I could drive with like just one hand and it's very relaxed. It is like a, a night and day difference. But I'm trying to put together a video for Sunday. With all that being said, we drove through some incredibly high winds uh, coming out of Canada and even with the safety plus bar it was a fight on the road and i was like this is it was rough i was terrified yeah it, it was rough and i felt good when we stopped at the gas station that all the truck drivers were talking about the wind too and they actually wound up shutting down the sky bridge because of the winds i mean it was really bad it was really bad other upgrades that we've done command hooks do command hooks count as <laughs> upgrades i'm not sure we got command hooks everywhere um, I guess this thing would be an upgrade. If you guys saw the video, uh, of the curtain that's Velcroed to the, to the back of our bunk that, uh, is easy to like take on and off and fold up and put in the wash and all that. We actually showed that to Winnebago and, uh, they really liked it. And I wouldn't be surprised. I think they're going to put it in some of their future models. Maybe that's the impression that I got. So don't you be surprised. always get that impression. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you guys start seeing curtains that are like Velcroed onto the bunks, you know where you saw it first. That was us. <laughs> why, would they, why would they put that into a... He a, really, a, You could go to the Michaels and go get Velcro. Rick... That seems like a lot of work for them. <laughs> Rick was what? Project manager or production? Now I can't remember what he did, but when I told him about it, he really liked it. And then... Even took pictures. I know. And now we actually put we put another Velcro strip on the actual roof of the RV so that when like our nieces and nephews come and they're sleeping in the bunk, they have a little bit of privacy. So then we just move the curtain up to the roof instead and they have their little area with their light and all that yeah. stuff up there. We'll show that on the Windrock trip because we're, we're going to have a friend stay with us for that week. Uh, my, my buddy Mark, he's going to come out to Windrock and ride the ATVs and everything. He's going to sleep up on that bunk and you'll be able to see uh the velcro and everything up there so now he has a little bit of private there's no Just privacy in, yeah bit. there's no privacy in an rv there really isn't <laughs> all right so i think that is it for tonight and we will catch you next time we appreciate everybody stopping in and saying hi and the questions i love questions i like answering them even if i don't have a good answer so <laughs> That's it. Right. That's it for tonight. Thanks, guys. Thanks you. Thank you very much, everybody. We really do appreciate you uh, giving the likes and the dislikes. And hanging out with us. <laughs> and hanging out with us. And we really appreciate you subscribing. Whatever it is that you saw in our banter and personalities, we, we do appreciate you subscribing. <laughs> it makes us feel good. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.